are more than 60 million single adults in the United States. So here on Love Connection, we've got a new way for singles to meet. We've compiled a videotape library of, a, of hundreds of attractive and available single people. We select some of those singles and we show them three videotapes. After they've watched the tapes, they choose the one they're most attracted to and go out on a date. She's a native Californian. She says she's irresponsible and loves to be in love. Please welcome Francie Wallace. I need something really romantic. Someone that smokes and drinks cigarettes. I mean, smokes, smokes and drinks cigarettes, yeah. Jane Scott doesn't can lift me. I'm divorced. Francie, what went wrong? One day he would want to be a movie star, and the next day he'd want to make Mortar, and the next day and he'd want to be a producer and a meat man. And each week he'd see an ad, and that's what he'd want to be. Now <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit more about you. Pay attention, okay, because you're going to get to vote again. He was raised in Cleveland. He says he likes to chase women, and here's one reason that he's never been married. I was with a married woman, and uh, it lasted about six months. And finally, her husband beat me up, and they moved out of town. He loves to spend time with his daughter, and he says he's not into the single scene. I don't think I've ever met somebody in a bar. I think I could look harder, but uh, I've been through... He was raised in New York City, likes to gamble. Sometimes he gets a little carried away, he says. In a passionate moment, I actually swallowed a girl's earring. Before we find out who Francie chose as her date, let's see all three of them again, okay? First there was Marty. Now, he's 33. He's a musician. And then there's Mark. He's a 35-year-old attorney. And finally, Eric. He's a publisher. He's 34. Who do you think is the best date for Francie? Here in the studio and at home, please make your choice now. Who did you select? I selected Rick. Why did you pick Eric? I picked him because he was the tallest. What is the impression of him? Interesting lady with an interesting idea for a date. I rented a limousine. Whoa! And I called him up and I said, okay, I'll meet you in front of a bowling alley in the valley. <laughs> tuxedo and he said all right and I, oh, on I was a sport. he didn't know about the limo oh so we drive up and i see my date standing at this porno bookstore beautiful tux and brown shoes what's she have oh. on rick you know the, the nice part about her outfit was she had a, a hat with a veil on it was very uh, we drove to the beach. Drove to the beach. And that was it. What? <laughs> There's really three of us, actually. The driver was quite a nice guy. It was so unmemorable. What time? Un Un unmemorable? Yeah. And we had the limo for two hours. Eight. <laughs> How did it really end? I had a date at 10.30. Let's take a look and see the audience. If you follow the audience's advice, we'll <laughs> send you out on another date. Oh, you don't no. want to do that? No, no, no. He's too short, and he's just got weird ideas. Well, listen, I want to thank you. Maybe we'll see you again. Thanks a lot. He's a native Californian who says that women often approach him because he looks like Chris Christopherson. You probably hear this all the time, don't you? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible being a bartender. Uh, I hear it probably 10,000 times a year. You get a lot of dates just because you look like Chris? Yeah, I get to be uh, selective, let's say. Watch closely because you're going to get to vote again, okay? First, there was Barbara. Now, she's from Chicago. She's a marathon walker who likes to eat, and she doesn't mind being alone sometimes. 
I enjoy being by myself. I'm very selective, and when I like somebody, I like them a lot. And it's usually somebody very special that I can have long conversations with. And um, do, you know, the things that I enjoy doing. She likes bicycle riding and long weekends, and here's something else that she likes. I like, I like hairy men, you know, a little hair, but I don't like hairy men. It's almost like dirty feet, you know, if it's dirty feet, you know, if they're, if they're, uh, you know, construction work or something, you know. She's a bodybuilder who enjoys all sports, and here's the kind of men who turn her off. Someone who talks to you, but talks right through you, like, like they want to look at someone else while they're talking to you. Talks about their old girlfriend or someone else, another female, you know, like you aren't even there. First there was Barbara, she's a 33-year-old uh, production coordinator. Then Suzanne, she's a credit analyst and she's 27. Finally, Denise, she's a 27-year-old hairstylist. Who do you think is the best lady for Charles? Here in the studio and at home, too. Please make your choice right now. You chose Suzanne. I chose Suzanne. Why'd you choose Suzanne for, other, for obvious reasons? I knew Suzanne was a good old gal as soon as I saw her. What was your first impression of him, never seeing him before? Um... Well, I talked to him on the phone, and he was a really nice guy. He was really easy to talk to. I think we talked for about an hour. All right, good. So you liked him. What did you think of him when you first saw him? Uh, the first time I saw him, I told him, you look like Chris Christopherson. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your date, Charles. I went to pick her up, and I had a sheet of stickers, you know, transfer stickers, and mm -hmm. I said, well, which, which one do you want? You know, they said all kinds of things, like, I love the Raiders, I love the Dodgers, I love this, I love that, and then she came to the one that said, I love you. That's the one she picked up. Woo. I thought that was a real good getting off point right there. Some people you like, and right away I liked him. He was really nice. He's a gentleman through the whole day. What happened next? Then we drove out to Dodger Stadium, got our place to park, and I says, well, it's time for breakfast. Went to the ballgame. Sure. I got in the trunk and whipped out a bottle of champagne, and we had breakfast. <laughs> Called tailgate party. But what else happened, Suzanne? After a few drinks, it was hard to remember exactly. <laughs> no. We went to the game, and uh, we got into a conversation with some gentleman in front of us, uh, or rather he did. About um, what? I don't remember. The two ladies behind us in the row behind us, you know, they had their two little daughters, and they wanted to get their picture taken with me and sign their programs and all that stuff. Oh. So I obliged by signing my own name. Oh, good. And she came back. I was trying to watch the ball game out of my left eye and listen to her talk in my right ear. And she talked quite a bit. Do you like the ball game? Uh, I don't remember a lot of the ball oh, good. game. Then we went back to uh, my house and spent a couple hours. <laughs> you want to tell us about that? <laughs> well, we were both so tired by the time we got back. <laughs> It ended there, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> after that, I went home. I fell asleep and woke up and... Something, it. Yeah, something like that. I... <laughs> Let's take a look over here at the monitor and see. Big margin. We'd like to pick up the tab for the second date if you'd like to take Suzanne out again. Oh, I'd love to, Chuck. That's excellent with me. Haven't seen each other for how long? How long has it been? Um, Six, eight weeks. A long time. Think. It's been a while then. This is a souvenir of our uh, ball game. Oh, sweet. Thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> well, I missed you. <laughs> yeah. Our next guest agreed to let our studio audience choose his date. He claims that women either really love him or they really hate him. 
Last time you said you were a great boyfriend, a terrible husband. Explain it to me. Over to a marriage and 500 out of 1,000 approximately in boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. 500 out of 1,000. Right. It's half good, half bad. The other part is all bad. We uh, showed the audience tapes of three women, and they chose one as your date. You and Karen Marie went out, right? In a way. <laughs> the way my life's been running, I had chosen a week ago for the audience to pick for me because, you know, I've been doing a lousy job lately, and I admit it. In a period of a week, I ran up $117 in phone bill, in the phone bill, trying to reach her, but going back and forth. She thought that it was a preliminary date, sort of like a tryout. This is normally a time, by the way, when we would meet Karen Marie, but I've been told she's not here. <laughs> she said that if she did come on the show, that her boyfriend would kill her. Have you ever been stood up before, man? Millions of times. Oh, millions of times. She ran in and looked completely unlike the videotape. Was she cute? She was cute. She was a little windblown. She asked me questions like, are you interested in getting married? And obviously she didn't know my biography. She said that she... Uh, uh, usually went on longer dates than just a day or so. And for instance, her last date was six and a half months. She met a very lonely guy and <laughs> she, she went out with a guy that lasted six and a half months. My ex-wives were like geniuses compared to her. <laughs> this took away her aces, kings, queens. She didn't have a full deck. Maybe she had a couple of eights, sevens. If someone shows up, I have a conversation for 20 minutes, I light a candle. It's unbelievable. Since your date didn't work out, I think it's only fair for us to offer you a, a date with another lady, okay? Is that okay with you? This particular point in my life, anything's okay, Chuck. <laughs> There was Becky, now she's divorced. She's 31 years old, kind of cute. Next there was Marcia, she's 37. She's never been married. She's kind of cute too. I like to go out with both. I'll start with the, the number one. We're gonna pick up the tab for that. Again. <laughs> again, we'll pick up the tab again. <laughs> Come back real soon and tell us what happened, okay? <laughs>